By now, you would have already known most of the things about Huawei's P30 Pro, such as the specs and what it is capable of from Huawei's keynote. So let's skip most of the fundamentals and talk about the camera entirely in today's video. Let's begin by talking about the camera specs. So this time, we've got four cameras on the back, which comprises of an optical stabilized 40 megapixel main sensor with a f1.6 aperture, a 20 megapixel ultra wide angle sensor, an optical stabilized 8 megapixel telephoto sensor that supports a 5x optical zoom, and a time of flight camera. Although you might think that the first two camera sensors are similar to the Mate 20 Pro's hardware, Huawei is employing a new super spectrum color sensor to the 40 megapixel lens which now captures colors in the RYYB rule and aims to capture more light and produces better low-light photos. And because of that, the camera supports an insane ISO sensitivity range of up to ISO 409600, which you can only find on a Sony A7S full-frame camera. While all this sounds pretty insane, and one could easily assume that this could be the ultimate DSLR or mirrorless camera replacement, you really shouldn't have that assumption. More on that in the later part of this video. Let's take a look at the camera samples right now. I'm very impressed with photos taken with the ultra wide angle and wide angle lens. The super spectrum sensor helps enhance colors and keeps details properly exposed in these two photos. Where sunlight is strong that day and most flagship phone cameras would have overexposed details, particularly the lines on the train track walls. Huawei isn't joking about the camera's zoom capabilities. The 5x optical zoom is really good and produces great color accuracy and detail. I'm even more impressed with how much the camera is able to preserve details when it is on 10x hybrid zoom when used outdoors and indoors. This is not possible with any smartphones in the market at this point of time. Getting up to 50x digital zoom, this is where photos start to get really ugly with grainy details. This is expected and it happens on any cameras that support such kind of digital zoom range. But considering that a smartphone can do this, I take my hats off to Huawei for that effort, even though I wouldn't be zooming that far if I owned a phone. In our low-light photography test, I was at a mall where lighting is extremely weak and I enabled night mode for both my wide-angle and telephoto shots. I am blown away by how Huawei's AIS managed to process my low-light photos and all of these were taken without a tripod. There is still noticeable noise and slight loss of detail in telephoto shots due to the smaller aperture on the periscope lens, but this is really good for smartphone standards. Let's make the low-light photography test a little more interesting by comparing with the Pixel 3 XL as both phones support their respective night modes and the Pixel 3 XL has been a champ in low-light photography despite its much lower DxO mark scores. With their respective night mode enabled, I love how the P30 Pro brightens my photos due to a longer exposure time and it even preserves details that the Pixel 3 XL isn't able to. This is also probably also due to the larger aperture and sensor size on the P30 Pro. However, what the Pixel 3 does better is color reproduction, where you get more accurate and natural colors. In my opinion, the Pixel 3 XL's night sight mode delivers actual lighting more accurately than the P30 Pro. While the P30 Pro night mode takes it more light to deliver brighter than usual photos in low light. Both are great low light shooters and you'll be the judge to tell me which one is better. Apart from boasting the P30 Pro's photography capabilities, Huawei has also mentioned improved low-light videography performance. And you know what? It's really bad. It's like as if the camera is trying extremely hard to detect the correct white balance and stabilize the video. So let's hope Huawei fixes that in a future software update. Now, let's get back to that insane ISO range. And nope, it doesn't work similar to a Sony A7S. While you do indeed get to crank up to that ISO range, other image settings are disabled starting from ISO 12800. And let's face it, you probably wouldn't use that as pictures will turn out to be extremely noisy as it will be in an extended ISO range. One thing that I'm still pretty annoyed with the P30 Pro's camera software is the inability to zoom when I want to shoot native 40 megapixel photos. So in most cases, you're stuck shooting photos with a 10 megapixel resolution if you want to switch to other lenses. It's been like this since last year's P20 Pro and Huawei needs to fix this. The Huawei P30 Pro is more camera than smartphone. This is literally Huawei showing off how it can push the boundaries of mobile photography and it has certainly done well to prove that it can. Though some of the features are gimmicky, especially when Richard Yu claims that the phone can shoot the Milky Way in his keynote, which I have yet to try and probably wouldn't even bother trying. Let alone the cons of this phone such as having a water drop notch in 2019 and lack of a headphone jack, 
the P30 Pro is the phone you should buy if you want to get serious in mobile photography. That's all for my thoughts on the Huawei P30 Pro's camera. Do check out the camera samples in the link down below, join the discussion in our community tab, or in the comments on what you think about the P30 Pro. Be sure to subscribe to us for more videos coming right up and hit that bell icon next to it to be notified of our future uploads. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.